Hey guys, this is your host Gooby, and welcome to the Toon Balloon Podcast, our outlet to discuss, theorize, and enjoy our favorite webtoons with the occasional anime and manga sprinkled in between. Now, today, we are going to have another deep dive episode completely dedicated to discussing a very important arc finale from one of my favorite webtoons, and that webtoon is Unordinary. We will be covering a very crucial finale to the everlasting Joker arc, along with many other details spanning from chapters 223 to 229. Yes, this episode is going to be a doozy, and yes, this episode will contain spoilers, and you have been warned. (laughs) I plan to dig deep into the mentality of John, to his support system, to the small steps he is taking to change along with many other things, such as the world building within Unordinary. I am such a huge fan of this webtoon, and I look forward to finally discussing my thoughts and analyses of what has happened, because I think the last time I did a podcast episode about Unordinary, um, I think I just covered the few episodes right before this whole event occurred, or at least we were digging into Serafina potentially getting her powers to finally getting around to getting her powers. And this is it, guys. (laughs) We are going to be talking about it. I know I will have one more deep dive episode coming next week that will be discussing a very hilarious webtoon with hopefully a guest. And then after that, I will finally release my Canvas-centric episode that has been in the works for the past few weeks. It's taking a bit. Uh, since I have loads of notes <laughs> and, and writing a script for it can take a good bit when I have that many notes and especially when I want to cover so many webtoons. So uh, just to give you a brief idea of the schedule, next week another deep dive for a webtoon and then after that it's going to be the canvas centric episode covering many canvas webtoons. Now that I have gotten the announcements out of the way and the intro, (laughs) let's dive into Unordinary by Udu-chan. One of the most beautiful characteristics of this webtoon is that it puts a lot of focus on character development and how they combat their inner demons. The complexity of it all is what is the true beauty within this comic. John is illustrated very deeply throughout the series and we know he has had his fair share of struggles. There is always this divide with the fans over John's character and over whether or not the things he is doing is okay, whether it is acceptable because he has dealt with abuse and bullying in the past. And in all honesty, (laughs) no, it isn't okay to beat everyone up into a bloody pulp. Yes, his bullies kind of had it coming, and in the end, they were only able to shape up once a madman stepped into the playing field. Um... But, and I will say this, the whole society of unordinary that these kids live in kind of reinforces them to behave this way, especially their school hierarchy, but I'll get to that later. (laughs) John has escalated the playing field with his strong powers and with him taking over as king, it has demonstrated the many flaws in this way that they live their lives. And you can find these flaws within the hierarchy to how they treat others due to their weaknesses. This is all stuff that has to be confronted because it's just not an ideal way of living. I mean, this is how the world has always been. And this is how these students have grown up. All of the students have just grown up in their lives dealing with a hierarchy of weakest to strongest. And I always question (laughs) why this world is so violent and why they all insist to beat each other to death. (laughs) But then I think back to just how this overall world is like. And the adults aren't any better. Heck, the adults are so bad that the headmaster has put all of his hopes into these children, all by with poor instruction. (laughs) Because um, he kind of just expects them to just run around and teach each other that it's not okay to beat everybody up and that weakness and strongness has nothing to do with the way you should 
civilize yourselves in society. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, back when the Remy trio were attempting to be supers, that whole neighborhood that they went to go and help out and save was an entire mess. Since this whole power imbalance is an issue everywhere in this world. The low tiers don't trust the high tiers because high tiers usually take advantage of the low tiers. And the high tiers have a bad reputation of overpowering places. And the thought of superpowers is so taboo that they are getting killed on the job. Like no one can even think of a high tier being helpful or kind when they have weakness. Like if a low tier neighborhood, like the one that Remy went, saw her, they freaked out because she was a high tier and they thought she was going to attack them when that wasn't the case. But that that's just the mentality that no one is safe if they're weak. And yeah, it's just a, a wrong way of thinking. Nothing about it is okay. And I get the feeling that now that we have finally dealt with the surface of the small Wellston Academy, that the next method of action to target what is going on outside of the Academy. But before we can ever get to dealing with the outside world, our main characters still have a lot on their plates. They got growth to do before we can see any significant changes to occur. So let's start off with episodes 223, 224, and 225. The reason I plan to discuss these three chapters together is due to the fact that if this were ever to get animated, and I so hope that that happens, that this will get animated <laughs> because I would love to watch it on the screen, I would suspect that these three chapters would all be compiled into one episode. It would be one of those penultimate episodes where the credits roll at the beginning and the theme song doesn't play till the end of the episode. Because <laughs> you know those episodes are the juicy ones. That those are the, yep, we are here for some good stuff. <laughs> and these three chapters just go hand in hand. So let's get to chapter 223. So this chapter starts off with that line that no one wants to hear, but in this situation, John really does need to hear it. Um, we need to talk. <laughs> Serafina waltzes in here to save Arlo and Remy's butts after John um, you know, is terrorizing them. And you know what? We see Serafina and her eyes are glowing. And this is it. We finally get to see Serafina with her ability again. The two already have a rough start right in the beginning of this chapter. John is at a warped mental state and he's starting to feel really paranoid with everybody. He's starting to think that everyone is ganging up on him just like they did in New Boston or Boston, New Boston. And I mean, he is just he kept assuming that um, Serafina was hiding her ability, that she was having everyone come attack him first, that she has always wanted to fight him. When, you know, that's not the case, but, you know, he's not in a good place right now. And we can tell that he's at a breaking point and is just lashing at everyone rather easily. And this includes Cecile, Arlo, Remy, and this is just due to him having a difficult time accepting that people are changing. A lot of the lashes that he has, no, a lot of the moments where he is attacking everybody is due to the possibility of change, of people rebelling, of past traumas kind of clicking in. He is so distraught and unaccepting that the bullies who have hurt him in the past may actually be making efforts to change themselves. And honestly, after all this, I would want for the former bullies to actually make an effort to apologize to John, um, even though he may have to, in the future, apologize to them. I think it is a mutual agreement that everyone needs to make an effort to apologize to one another because, in all honesty, they want to shift the blame on John. They want to say he did it, he's, he's the reason why everyone's a mess, when a school's a mess, but the school was already a mess and he kind of just highlighted it for you all <laughs> by being, I guess, a bit scarier. But in the end of the day, if John apologizes, there's that closure and there's no lesson being taught if the former bullies haven't 
you know, gone out and apologized to all the low tiers. And in the past, John was a low tier. So I think everyone just needs to start telling each other, sorry, and hug it out. <laughs> anyway, John accuses Sarah of hiding her powers, like I said earlier, or that she has been planning to backstab him, you know, stuff that he has had history with. And, and this isn't the case, of course. And even though Sarah is making an effort to tell him otherwise, he isn't in a place to listen. Uh, we get an epic battle, of course, between the two of them. And, you know, even though we don't want them to fight, I don't want them to fight. <laughs> it was still cool. It was cool to see um, Sarah utilize her powers because we have had such a long break from not seeing her use her powers. We saw in the beginning. And even in those times, it was very brief. We still didn't get much um, chances to see her use her time ability and it's so cool to see her use it against John you know the moments when she um shreds her arm punching some of the barrier um you know she just warps back time and then her arm's all okay <laughs> I think that's such a unique way to use her ability and it looks painful <laughs> and I would so love for these two once everything is cleared and they're okay and good to go that they can start working together and fighting together it would be just such a nice dynamic duo you know, they'd be the terrifying fighting duo. <laughs> and this fight, even though not a lot of people ask, like, want them to fight, it is one way to help open that path to get to what we get later on in the chapters. Serafina works her way to John and keeps pushing her objective and that she just wants to help him. That is all Serafina has aimed to do ever since she got her power back. When Lila was telling her that, you know, there's repercussions, what is she going to do when she gets her power? Her main goal was always to help John because John has always been there to help her when she needed it the most. And she wants to be there for John because John is her friend. And I love that she is just so focused and that she is so determined to get to him. And she literally has to get through to him because John is constantly building up a physical and metaphorical wall against her. <laughs> we got him building a giant black barrier. But in reality, he's still shutting her out because he mentally cannot accept the fact that he is deserving of second chances. Sarah is making her rounds, matching up in power, but she is feeling some serious recoil from it all. And it did worry me that Sarah could deal some massive damage to her body since it does need time to adjust to her ability again. We get that flashback of Sarah talking to her sister about conditions and it looks like the effects of her treatment are showing. Eventually, Sarah decides to utilize, and I'll say it, talk no jutsu. <laughs> but in this case, it is what has been needed forever. Talk no jutsu is the key to getting to John <laughs> because John really needed to hear the words that came from Serafina's mouth next. You're the one fighting yourself. That is something that John has been fighting so much within his inner thoughts that we get to see in the next panels. He denies these feelings. And I love that Uruchan illustrates the way his thoughts overlap one another. John is a teenager and you know all of these kids are teenagers and he has suffered so much trauma in the past. This could include the time he was bullied all throughout school and he couldn't defend himself and his inability to emotionally deal and cope with the prospect of him getting his powers late and people turning against him to when he ended up getting sent to a readjustment facility. All of that has just absolutely traumatized him. And even after he left that readjustment facility, he was manufactured to have such confliction about himself because you saw the way that quote unquote therapy had on him, that effect that it had on him. He had to completely change himself. He can never forgive himself for the way he behaved, nor gives himself second chances. And that's why he took up that gelled hair persona. That's why he chose to be a cripple, because the poor guy's self-image 
was absolutely ruined and he wasn't able to cope with change. And horrible, horrible man that started it all and made John the way he, he is and made him feel absolutely terrible about himself. You know, <laughs> I, I, I hope we see him again because I would really want to have John and Sarah give him a piece of their minds. And I would really hope that one day John can actually open up to Serafina and tell her all of the stuff he has dealt with when it came to the readjustment facility. Because I don't even think um, John's dad knew what happened to him in that facility. John is the only one that knows other than Keon or whatever his name is. And he hasn't had a real chat about that because that's scary stuff. And that's emotional trauma. And I think he could really use his friend right now. He could really have a friend right now to just talk about it. I mean, John kind of needs therapy in general, but after that, I think he probably would be scared to go to therapy. <laughs> Especially since it's kind of trying to categorize itself as therapy. But I would really like to see them bond and talk about these things that he has a hard time telling other people about. John's mindset was attacked and he couldn't develop properly from all of that. It's incredible that John, even when he is hit at his lowest point, he still has Sarah. He still has that one person that believes in him. And episode 224 really demonstrates how much of an impact having one person look out for you can really do when John is encapsulating himself in that barrier. It was a terrifying sight because you could tell he wasn't willing to accept himself and it looked like he was on the verge of just hurting himself because in his own mental state, when you get an idea of what he is dealing with on the inside, he really is fighting himself. And I was so worried that the thought of harming himself was coming because that barrier kind of insinuates that if something hits it, it's supposed to attack him next. And that was not a great sight. And I'm so glad that Sarah was there. I was so glad that she was able to crack that barrier and get through. Those demonstrations of little John antagonizing him and being that source of all those negative thoughts was a representation of what kind of battle John has been dealing with all along. And that's himself. He tells himself he doesn't deserve it, that the thought of forgiveness was impossible. But of course, this isn't true. And Sarah showed him that that wasn't the case. She tells him that he is not a monster, that he isn't the same person anymore. And that unwinds it all. And he lets go. And thank you, Sarah. <laughs> she is our MVP. <laughs> and honestly, when isn't she? But just as they finally reconcile, Sarah's body gives in and she faints. But the fact that John is there to catch her was so sweet. I, I may be digging too much, but, you know, I felt like that was an excellent way of showing that when she is down, he is there by her side, just like how she is for him. And I love that these two are able to grow together again because I really miss their friendship and I miss the way... They used to interact before everything went downhill. And you know, I think a lot of people can ship these two together. Um, I ship them. <laughs> and I I think there are little clues everywhere where, yeah, it's going to happen. But I think this is such a sweet way to show that, yes, they have just such a beautiful relationship. And I love that they were able to finally reconnect. And that John was finally able to shed some tears. You know, I think the poor guy hasn't shed any tears this whole time we have seen him because he's kind of just bottling it up. And when she tells him those key words, you're not a monster, he he just he just wells up. And I, I love that. I was so happy for him. Eventually, 225 has everyone show up to see what's up and deal with the aftermath. Um, of course, they see Sarah is, you know fainted <laughs> and so they gotta go and send her to the infirmary the doctor is displeased of course because why is everybody getting hurt in this school <laughs> uh the poor guy 
I, I really hope he's getting paid well because, yeah, that that's... If it's like minimum wage or something, I think that's above his pay grade. <laughs> and John decides that he needs some time to himself and to recollect. Also, the headmaster is obviously disappointed in John for not starting a new legacy in a sense. And, and honestly, the headmaster really sucks. <laughs> you, you know why? Because... Why is he putting so much weight on this generation when I don't even think this school is putting in an effort to teach these children to not terrorize each other? Maybe there is a better method if you want to invoke ways of teaching. Maybe not place all these expectations on these students when you kind of just let them run all willy-nilly. <laughs> like, where is the discipline? Where is the... The, the, the teaching <laughs> he's just kind of like yeah they're totally gonna change it up you know I, I have some faith in this john guy oh man he, he didn't do what i expected him to do even though i didn't go and address it to him oh but now there's this black guy yeah this is totally gonna work when obviously in the last sense it failed bruh <laughs> So this whole episode ends off with John leaving the academy and he gets to hang out with one of the coolest guys out there, his dad. <laughs> In the next segment, we will be covering chapters 226 to 229. We'll be right back after this short music sesh. Okay, so chapter 226 starts off fantastic. I'm kidding. <laughs> John is having nightmares of his time at the readjustment facility and of his past experiences with former friends. The poor thing can't have any rest due to all of this. And he remembers what Serafina tells him. That little bit of sunlight at the end of the tunnel is what keeps him going. And I gotta say, John looks so much more relaxed now. He looks like he has mellowed out. He doesn't look like he slept in days, but he also doesn't look like he's so fueled on anger and vengeance anymore. <laughs> and John sits down with his dad, William, for breakfast. And sadly, John is still diving into those self-deprecating thoughts. Thoughts that Serafina told him to stop thinking about. But that's going to take some time. His dad is obviously concerned and is trying to understand why he is so suddenly hateful of himself, and even his dad has to drop some wisdom on him, that he needs to put in the work to get better and take responsibility. William says that John needs to give himself a chance, which uh, strikes John to the core because that is exactly the thing that John has such a difficult time doing. I mean, this is so human of him because self-sabotage is so normal out of everybody and, and that is something that he is worried he'll do, but it's true. You got to put in the work. You can't see any new developments if you don't put any effort in yourself. John is still learning to do that for himself, to give himself a second chance. And so he has an outburst and that leads to him leaving the dinner table or the breakfast table. <laughs> I just wanted to point out that when his dad made breakfast, I thought, huh, I, I wonder if they'll finish that meal. And lo and behold, he took one bite of toast and bounced. It, it's something I notice in shows and in anime that the parents could make a beautiful buffet and the main character only eats like a crumb of it <laughs> or like a strawberry or in John's case, a piece of toast. So, so William is dealing with some thoughts himself. He's upset that he can't guide John very well since he does not have an ability, which is tough. As a parent myself, I can understand that it's scary to feel like you can't give your child everything they need to develop well. But William is doing his best, and I think he's a great father for that. He, he puts his son first, and he remembers what he needs, and he remembers 
what he needs to hear when he's going through things like this. I mean, he wrote that whole book, Unordinary, for John. So that way he could move past what he dealt with in that readjustment facility. And I think um, William is great for that. He puts in so much heart and effort and love for John. And that's so sweet. John ends up shopping at a U-Mart and bumps into a ghost of his past, Adrian, whilst offering a U-Mart membership. <laughs> I love me some loyalty programs, and I wonder if John signed up. 227 has these two attempting to have an interaction. Adrian seems very social and is trying his best to think of a good approach, but he notices that John is shaking. And then John dashes off after paying for his stuff. So I can get the feeling that John was not ready to put in the work this early. But you know what? It's for his own good. He stays for Adrian to get out of work. And the poor guy thinks he's going to get jumped. <laughs> and also, they are doing an excellent job at social distancing when they decide to chat. And, and that gets even better after John reveals why he was suspended from school. Excessive violence. And, and Adrian kind of just scoots away <laughs> and John apologizes to Adrian for his past behavior and Adrian is pretty swell. He is forgiving of John and wishes him well, much to John's surprise. And eventually Adrian has to tap into the subject with Claire, which to John was an immediate no. He does not want to go see Claire again. He says that she's the reason this all happened. She's the reason why he's like this, yada, yada. But Adrian has to correct some mistakes he made in the past as well, as he delivers the truth to John. He tells John that Claire has cared for John this whole time and that everything that Adrian had said in the past when he said that Claire was teaming up on him, that she was going to attack him, that wasn't true because he misheard her. And this ends up infuriating John. I think John already had a difficult time accepting the fact that his friend had quote unquote betrayed him, but then to find out that everything his mind has built up upon that was all a lie. And that's a harsh truth to recollect after, especially when a lot of his past behavior festered from these experiences. John can't believe it, and so he storms off. And good on him. He didn't attack another person and instead walks away. <laughs> and, and that's good to see him work out his frustrations differently. He doesn't really lash out. I mean, yeah, he was yelling, but he didn't try to hit Adrian or, or do something violent. So he just walked away. And before he gets home, William is looking at an old picture with John's mom in the background, or at least her hair and pretty dress. <laughs> I am so ready to hear more about his mom because she hasn't been mentioned yet. So John gets home and he's plenty upset. He refuses more food and he goes to bed. <laughs> oh, poor William. He's just cooking all these meals. And I mean, I guess we'll just have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> and, and this leads us to chapter 228, where John is seen running, thinking very intensely about this new piece of news from Adrian. Eventually, he finds out a little more of this truth from his dad after William mentions that Claire came to him crying because no one was able to get to John back when he was acting out in New Boston or New Boston. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> and, you know, you can see the flashback. She's in tears. She's saying, I don't know what to do anymore. And John doesn't seem to remember this at all. John doesn't think this is true. He's like, that's impossible. There's no way she did it. Why didn't you tell me she did this? And his dad says, uh, yeah, I did come to you. I did tell you about this over plates of spaghetti. <laughs> when his dad had mentioned this happening, like John doesn't remember it at all. John doesn't remember this whole conversation that he had with his dad over dinner. But it looks like John very much had a conversation around Claire crying to his dad, but he just refused to listen. And, and more so not like, an, like they didn't really talk entirely about Claire, just more so around the idea of Claire. William mentions to him that, you know, she came up to him um, during the afternoon 
and was like, hey, I think you're getting into a lot of fights. And eventually it gets John to um, lash out at his dad and he just refuses to listen. Which I guess is a character trait of John's that he'll need to work on for sure. But what really got me was when John antagonized his dad with his powers. Like, uh uh-uh. John, I know your dad could handle you in a heartbeat. (laughs) But still, that must be terrifying to have your rebellious son threaten you like that. And it speaks miles of who John used to be back in New Boston. It has some semblance to when he talked down to Serafina when she was lacking her powers. That power hunger is dangerous. And eventually, after all of this, John seeks Claire out and is rightfully terrified (laughs) that a ghost from her past has shown up at her door. 229 demonstrates a lot of different perspectives, Claire's and John's. Claire tells John the truth, but he won't accept it. Remember when I said listening is going to be a character trait he'll need to work on? Well, he'll also need to work on talking because, boy, did this boy misunderstand so much due to lack of communication. (laughs) In the end, he realizes something. Him and Claire share the fact that he doesn't listen and that all the times he was confronted, it could never lead to anything fruitful because he always resorted to violence. Like, he has to work on a lot of aspects of himself, and I feel like one of the first things he's going to have to start really hammering down on himself is communicating with others, listening, talking, and being chill when that happens. Like no more outbursts, no more lashing out and acting out with violence. John needs to start learning to listen. (laughs) And, And, you know, I guess he just needs to really work on his communication skills because A lot of these things that have happened in his past, I feel like could have been avoided if he just, you know, sat down and listened to one of his friends. But that's not the case. (laughs) And instead of yelling and insisting to talk more, John makes those first steps in working on his communication skills. John listens to Claire for the first time in a long time and walks away like she asks him to. Because she tells him, go away, John, please, just leave me alone. And he listens. He turns around, walks away. He doesn't say anything else. He doesn't yell at her. He doesn't insist that she needs to bring up more of her story. He just walks away and listens for once. This chapter ends off wonderfully because when William finally finds John... And gives him something he really needed. A hug and a shoulder to cry on. Honestly, I am so happy for John now. He is finally letting those emotions waterfall and allow himself a moment to come to terms with everything. I'm glad that John has such a supportive circle of friends and family because John always felt like he was alone. But in reality, they were always there. And he just needed to give himself a chance, just like how everyone else in his life, in his social circle, are telling him to do. And I feel like it's just one of those situations where, you know, you could try to self-deprecate and completely attack yourself and make yourself feel bad. But when there are people out there who support you, just like in John's situation, he had Sarah here who was kept telling him over and over again that she was there for him and that she was his friend. That was the key to making sure that he will be able to bounce back and redeem himself. Like, don't get me wrong. John did a lot of bad stuff in the past and he's going to have to redeem himself in a way that (laughs) is going to involve a lot of confrontation and a lot of listening and communication because this boy is going to have to work really hard to make sure that he can bounce back in a way that's healthy and helpful for him in the future. I know some people had said they didn't want John to have a redemption arc, but the thing is, this has been hinted at for a long time. I feel like him going rogue. (laughs) I'm going to call it rogue. Um, I I don't think it was ever going to be permanent. It was always going to be, he's going to bounce back because there's more to this story than just John being Joker and 
And I think we've been seeing building blocks of this for a long time. I know there was like a, a theory of mine where <laughs> I thought, okay, if John doesn't redeem himself, he might end up getting attacked by the authorities and he might lose his powers or um, something bad's going to happen to John. He might get hurt and then he'll just be in a comatose state for <laughs> like the rest of the series or something like that. But that's not the case because John ends up finally... Um, getting better and he is working hard to correct himself and his behavior and I am worried a little bit because I did see something a little while ago when I was reading the chapter again and that was the fact that in one of the past flashbacks that John had with his dad was when his dad was telling him that he needs to be grateful for the things he has because you know his powers were new and he was lashing out and getting into fights and his dad was telling him, hey, you need to quit that. <laughs> and um, he's like, you need to be appreciative. You need to be grateful for these powers that you've been given. But, you know, John wasn't in the state of mind where he was being very grateful about it. He was just attacking others. And I was worried that this could be like foreshadowing. I don't know if it is, but it could be foreshadowing that he might lose his powers or there might be like the power dampener situation where it might take away his ability. I don't know. I know Serafina won't be involved in that because I know she isn't going to be helping Lila take people's powers away or anything because that was one of her conditions whenever she told her sister. But I do have a lot of theories. I kind of get the feeling that once um, John is done with his little um, <laughs> a, a journey, his self-reflection, um, he's going to be coming back to the Academy. And it's going to be a little rough when he finally gets to see everybody again. And things might be different. And Serafina's probably going to be going on those missions of hers with her sister. And um, I want to say that the two of them are going to be honest with, you, with each other. Uh, I'm going to suspect that maybe Serafina will inform John of what's going on with her life right now. And how she got her powers. Because I can see her being only able to talk to John about this. Maybe. Just maybe. And I can also see John ended up finally opening up to Serafina about what happened to him in that uh, the camps where he got sent to after lashing out and acting up at New Boston. Um, I guess another thing I kind of think might happen, I don't know, is that John might end up helping Serafina with her missions. Maybe. <laughs> I kind of feel like we're going to be seeing Cone, whatever his name was that did that stuff to John back in the that camp place that he got sent to because I get the feeling you know he is part of the authorities and Lila isn't working with the authorities she is doing something that is against what they do and I get the feeling that Serafina might end up having to confront this guy and she you know maybe she already knew what happened to John from him and she's gonna end up having to deal with that um he might have some involvement against her Ember I mean, there is a lot of stuff that could be happening in the future. And I just don't know <laughs> what to expect, really. Because now that John is finally mellowing out and starting to reconnect with himself, um, there is just a whole list of possibilities of things that could happen that would be so beneficial for everyone in the school and outside. Because I know this is going to be diving onto the outside territory of the academy it's not going to be any more about what's inside here only it's going to be about what's happening on the outside kind of like <laughs> um becoming an ordinary shippuden <laughs> so some points i wanted to make um I, <laughs> just some some silly points um talk no jutsu very very perfect for this story <laughs> uh serafina is a world-class talk no jutsu user and then we have William being MVP dad over here and great chef. <laughs> and you know what? Adrian is a really great friend and just a swell guy. I feel like I would really like to see for him and John to hang out once again. Maybe he'll even um, hit him up one more time before he leaves to the academy. They might hang out for a little bit and maybe John can finally get his friends back. Who knows? I would suspect that maybe John's going to end up talking to Claire again before he goes back to the Academy just to, I guess, um, tie some loose ends. Because I don't know, 
how much longer these characters are going to be staying in his storyline. Because after this, I am suspecting that we will be moving on to newer things. And John's arc with all of this is coming to a close. And then it will be like a fresh new start for everybody. So I am really curious what's going to happen next. And so I would love to hear what you guys think of this final arc of John's Joker fiasco. <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts and opinions by messaging me through either of my social medias. My Instagram and my Twitter are both at the Toon Balloon. I would love to hear from you. Also, definitely tell me any other webtoons, anime, or manga that you are interested in. I may talk about them in future episodes. The Toon Balloon podcast can be listened to on SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. I also got it included on Podbean, so if you like listening to stuff there, you can go and check it out on Podbean as well. Um, if you are an artist and you are making fan art, webtoon fan art in particular, I am having a little event on my Instagram where you can submit your fan art and it could be any old, new, current, whatever, and you can send it with the hashtag fan art spotlight event and I will feature it on my stories whenever I get a chance. So if you are an artist and you would like your art to be featured, go and do that right now this week and well, I'll probably be holding another one in the near, like in the future, but right now that's what we're doing this month. Uh, next month, more than likely, it's going to be another self promo event, and I have something in mind for um, June, just because it is going to be Pride Month, and I am an avid supporter for all of the LGBTQ community, and I would love to find a way to support them, any of the creators that are part of that community. So you might be seeing something for June in the short time from now. <laughs> so if you're interested in any of this stuff, go check out my Instagram page. And so I would like to ask you all one quick question. Out of all the unordinary characters, which one is your favorite <laughs> and why? And you can tell me this with all of my mention social medias if you want or you can even comment on the soundcloud page um, whatever uh, suits your fancy and so let's end this episode of the podcast thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time to listen to my humble podcast I look forward to talking with you again. This is the Toon Balloon Podcast. I was your host, Gooby. See you next time.